Yep, I think first of all, you really need to acknowledge that the Euro codes are coming. Um, there has been a lot of hype around them in the past. You know, ten years ago, with the pre-standards, they were coming. Um, the reality was they didn't. Um, so it's it's, uh, it's it's accepting this time round that they really are going coming into force. So it's no good putting your head in the sand. Um, you know, we really do need to crack on and introduce them in your business. Secondly, I would say you know, don't panic about them. Um, they do look daunting. Uh, but the experience that most designers have had when they've actually had the opportunity to use the codes for real rather than just be sent off on, on training courses is that you pick them up relatively quickly. And the sort of time scale we've been finding with our designers, who are experienced designers but have no prior knowledge of the Euro codes, is that they tend to pick up the basics of the, of the codes within a relatively short period of around about two weeks or so. And that is obviously influenced by how much local support they have and the caliber of the engineer, but that's the sort of time frame where they get back to, I would say, around about 90% efficiency. So I think you just have to trust people that are telling you this um, and take the opportunity to use them uh, when you can. So that, that leads me on to the third point, which is do take the opportunity to use the codes when you can and don't leave it to the last possible minute. Um, if you leave them to the last possible minute, it's, uh, it's going to be the case that you'll be trying to use them on the most sort of commercially um, program adverse project that you can, and that's exactly the sort of time you don't want to be trying to pick up new rules. So look for opportunities to use them under, under slightly less pressurised circumstances. So that, that might be using them in situations where actually you could still use the British standards. Uh, if your client will allow you to use the Euro codes, then it's advantageous to try and do that. Um, Feasibility studies are a good place to use Euro codes. Um, they, they tend to be slightly less pressurised in terms of the delivery. Um, and also the likelihood is that a feasibility study will turn itself into a design project later on. And that, that full-blown design project will be a few years downstream. And by that time, it's very likely that it will be mandatory to use the Euro codes. So it's, it's still wholly appropriate to use Euro codes for that sort of situation, even though it might not appear to be mandatory at the time. So accept they're coming and take the opportunity to try and get your staff using the Eurocodes in situations which aren't pressurised.